everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to install Ghidra and how to get started with using Ghidra. So let's just switch to my virtual machine right here and we can actually get started. Alright, so there we go. I already downloaded Ghidra, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's first explain what Ghidra is. So Ghidra is a free and open source tool for reverse engineering and is developed by NSA. You can actually download it for free from GitHub. You can actually visit their website and just press download Ghidra. And then in order to install Ghidra, you can follow the installation guide right here and just switch to the installing Ghidra. And once you're there, you're going to notice that we also need Java. So once Ghidra is downloaded, you're going to boot up your terminal and you're going to navigate to your folder. In my case, it's downloads and you're going to unzip the file. It's not going to come with this install with apt file. This is just what I made. I'm going to show you this later. So let's zoom in the terminal so you can see everything better. All right. So the first thing we're going to run is we're going to run unzip and then the name of file. And in our case, it's Ghidra zip. Uh, now, if you don't have unzip, if it says that you don't have it, you can just run sudo apt get install and we run this. And also, if you don't have apt, you can actually use pacman or whatever you have. So right now that it's unzipped, we can actually take a look at our directories and we can actually notice that we have a Ghidra directory. So let's first do sudo rm Ghidra because we don't need this zip anymore and we're going to remove this and now it's cleaner. So let's navigate into this directory right here and list out the things. So as you can see right here, we have the Ghidra run. Now on Kali Linux, I haven't installed anything. This is a fresh install. So we can just do sudo dot slash and Ghidra run. And if you run this, it's going to tell you that you don't have the JDK 11 plus and you can just close this off. It doesn't really matter. So one thing we're going to do is navigate back to the directory and take a look at that file that I was talking about. We can see that there are some commands right here. So if you don't have this repository, you can actually add this repository. But I think that if you just run sudo apt install like this, it's actually going to allow you to install Java without adding the repository. So we can actually say yes. All right, now that everything is installed, we can actually ls and we can actually enter Ghidra right now and we can run Ghidra run. And if you run this right now, nothing will happen, but just wait a second. And right here we have the Ghidra user agreement. And you can just press agree and it's going to pop out some windows after this, but it's going to pop out a couple of them, but don't be afraid. We're just going to turn off most of them, right? So we don't need this. We're going to close that and we don't need this tip of the day. So we just uncheck this because you don't need it and go close. And here is our main window. Now, in order to solve a simple crappy, which we're going to do, I'm just going to switch to my other VM because I already have everything installed and set up, right? So let's close this off. All right, so let's boot up the terminal. All right, so now that we're here, we can run Ghidra. Okay, so this is our file, and let's load it up in Ghidra by going File, New Project, and we first have to make a project. It doesn't have to be a shared project. You can just go Next, and you can name it whatever you want. So let's just name it this. Now let's press Finish, and now we can press this button and then import it from there, or we can just drag this in. And it's gonna ask us what kind of type it is and stuff like that. Usually you would just have to guess what the type it is or just know, and you can find this out uh, on a lot of different ways, but for the beginners, we don't really need this. But I'm going to show you some basic commands. Uh, just because I feel like you should know this. So uh, a command for finding out what type of file it is, is for example, file, and then the name of the file, and it's going to tell you, oh, don't read permissions, sudo, right? And it's going to tell you that it is an elf file, 64-bit LSP shared object. This command actually tells you what kind of file it is, but sometimes it's not gonna tell you the correct thing. For example, if you're analyzing malware, it can happen that it can tell you the wrong thing, what it thinks that it is or stuff like that. And you can actually check a lot of things. For example, if you can use strings uh, on key gen me, if you don't have them, you can add to install them then it's just going to show you all the strings that are visible inside of this file so you don't have to go through it like if you do cat and the file it's actually going to show you like all sorts of stuff and it's going to be confusing and stuff like that so you want something like strings you can actually also do xxd and then the name of the file which is keygenme and you can actually see the hex dump of the file and all sorts of stuff like that now we can actually get into Ghidra. then there's also uh, things that you're going to learn like s trace and l trace and stuff like that but we're not going to get into that right now so let's press ok and now our file is going to be important. And now it's going to pop this screen up and you can read all sorts of information about the file right here. And you can just press OK for now. And in order to run the Ghidra view of the file, basically with code browser, you can just double click it here. And now this dragon will appear and then now Ghidra is going to load. So right here it's going to ask you a really important question. Do you want to analyze it? And you can press yes. And what this will do is it's actually going to make sure that the decompiler is actually showing stuff and this is really important for us. And you can also check this box right here. The only one that it isn't read but isn't checked. So decompiler parameter ID and just press analyze. And right here at the bottom you can actually see that it's applying function signatures and stuff like that. So just wait until this is done. So let me just introduce you to Ghidra before we get started. So right here is the decompiler. This is where we're going to read most of our stuff because we don't know assembly. 
you will learn assembly eventually, you will have to, but um, the compiler is pretty useful for this. And this is the console for scripting. Uh, this is the data type manager. Nothing important for right now. Uh, what is important is this one right here. And as you can see, it says functions. And this is where we can navigate our functions. So obviously, we want to start with main function because main function is the function that does everything at the beginning or well, like the main function, basically, as the name says, you can also search like here, then you can like search main or search entry. And as you can see right now, right here, if I click the code, or if I click main, something happens in a decompiler. What also matters is the search and for strings, you can search for strings. And this is pretty useful. And it does basically the same thing as strings, but it can also find some things like comments that might be useful to you. And as you can see right here, we don't actually see the key, but we can actually see that something is happening. So these are variables being defined. And then something is happening right here with the local 10. And if it's taken in FS offset, and it's taking this value, and if you hover right here, you can see that this value is actually 40, for example, in decimal. So and then it's printing enter your key. So what we really care about is this input right here. So this is just a regular input, it's storing its value in local 14 variable. And if you take a look right here, it actually goes through a function validate key, and this is our local 14. So whatever we input goes to the function validate key. And then if the function returns true, or one, in this case, it's going to say good job mate, now key again me. And we're going to talk about key again, or key gen, however you want to call it, we're going to talk about that a little bit later, but we are going to do that as well. And else if it's not, so if it returns anything else, which is probably zero or something, it's going to say no, if we navigate to the validate key right here, we can actually see that it's a function that takes in a parameter, which makes sense, and then returns some sort of value. And in our case, we can see that our param is being percent and then something and equals equals zero. And this percent, if you know any anything about programming, you can remember that this percent basically means, uh, let's say some number divided by something. And then if the leftover numbers are zero, so if you divide something and it's perfect fit, then it's going to return a certain value. In, in other words, if we take a look at this zero four C, we can see that it's a, it's a one two twenty three. And if we try to enter a param uh, that is divided by one two twenty three, and it returns the rest of the numbers zero. So if it's one two twenty four, it's, it's not going to return zero. This is just math stuff. So let me open Python for you just to explain this to you. So 12 and then percent 12 and it's going to say zero. But if you do, you know, 13 and then percent 12, it's going to say one, right? So that's the difference. So and if you do 14, it's going to say two. There you go. You get the point. So this is what we're doing right here. So this number one to 23 is being compared with our number. So let's say our entry is 20. And then the other number is one to 23, as we said, and the percentage signs and one to 23. And we can just press enter and it's not going to equal zero, which is going to hit else. And it's not going to give us the good job mate. Now key gen me. Um, it's actually going to give us, you know, 20. Well, we want to get zero. So how do we get zero? And this equals equal sign just basically means it's comparing it and not assigning it. So this just means we have one to 23 and then the sign and one to 23. And now if you do this, it's going to be zero. So we got it. So this is the validation of the key. And then it basically returns that. And now let's go back to main. And uh, we can actually see that it's going to say good job mate. Now key gen me. And one thing we can do right now is we can close this. Don't save. So Ghidra helped us with everything. And we can actually just can navigate to desktop and we can run this file. There we go. And it's going to say enter your key. And as I said, if you enter, you know, like anything, let's say 10, it's going to say no. But if you enter 1, 2, 23, which was our key, it's going to say good job, mate. Now keygen me. Now you can guess that we can easily solve this with Python. So let's sudo nano keygen.py. If, okay, if this one and then equals equals zero, we're going to return the print statement. And as you can see, returns 1 to 23. Okay, and then now obviously we have to indent this. So let's just put it in there. And we're going to print it out if it is if it meets the criteria. So we're going to print it out and exit this. And now let's run it with Python. And now, as you can see, we, we got a couple of numbers. So 2, 4, 46, which is obvious, and 1, 2, 23, which is obvious. So these are all the keys that we can enter. So now you can actually just pipe this uh, into the keygen however you want. So we can run it again, and we can actually just pipe that into keygen me. There we go. So you can actually pipe this in. All of these keys will actually work, and it's going to say, good job, uh, mate, now keygen me. So that's it for today. That's all I wanted to show you. The one thing that I also want to show you is crackmes.1 webpage. If you visit this webpage, you can actually find a lot of crackmes and they're pretty fun and pretty interesting. And you also have a lot of them for beginners. And all you have to do is go to search and search for very easy. For example, I actually recommend C or C++ and Linux. And you can just press search and you can find a lot of them right here. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.